Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at part four of the uh, the laser ammo laser bolt that we've uh, previously done some videos on. So um, just to sort of like recap, this is the uh, the kind of AR15 laser bolt you can get from laser ammo. So for the uh, the kind of um, AR platform, and uh, in part four here, we're going to basically talk about um, obviously the final steps, which was basically the discussion regarding the trigger housing here and the the trigger weight. And also we're going to um, take a look at obviously uh, setting up the laser bolt in this um, Schmeisner AR-15 rifle here and we're going to run some uh, kind of quick shots on some of the simulators we have and then we'll uh, discuss at the end of the video a review and what sort of walk through of uh, what we think of the uh, the actual laser bolt, uh, how it performed on the simulators and just an, a general sort of like summary of the, the last four, uh, three videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly uh, take a look at the uh, the trigger mechanism. Now, if you haven't seen the previous uh, videos, so I'll take a look at those. We talk about obviously the unboxing in part one. Um, part two was obviously fitting the laser bolt and the trigger uh, to the AR-15. Again, in, in this um, video, I want to cover something we, we actually missed on those two videos, which was the uh, element regarding the, the trigger weight. So that's the, the section you can see here. You can actually adjust some springs. You get five springs for setting the weight on the trigger. And we're going to talk about this because this was something we omitted on the on the previous videos. Okay, so let's just quickly look at that. Then, so again, what's supplied? Obviously, you get your, your laser bolt here, and uh, you get this trigger kind of mechanism which sits in the trigger well behind the trigger, and uh, the trigger obviously pushes against this little buffer plate here, which is detachable. Okay, so basically, these are again magnetic, and they just literally sit in this housing on the trigger um, actuator, and they just kind of sort of drop into place and they sit there and they sort of you know magnetically sort of like secured but what I want to talk about in in this video is the, is these springs so I don't know if you can see uh, inside here I'll bring it a bit closer hopefully you can see that there's a set of springs in the inside which basically uh, essentially when you go to actually physically uh, pull the trigger you'll you'll hear this clicking so there's a, a kind of small little uh, button actuator in there so essentially, you have something similar to this behind these plates. So this is like a, just a little sort of, almost like a surface mount little button. And obviously that button there is what triggers the actual, the laser electronics internally. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, cover obviously the removal of these. So in the in instructions, it mentions obviously you can use a supplied Allen key to push the, the plates or the springs rather out. And you have obviously the, the five springs. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just, remove the, the hex key that they supply in the kit and it's simply a case of and I'll try and do this as close as I can to the camera as you can see you have a little aperture here which you can basically just push and the springs themselves just slide out now it's probably best to remove the, the little buffer plates so you don't so you can sort of see now as I push it through the, the plates themselves slide out and there's there's five in there and you can probably just see the little button if I bring it closer so that little button there is obviously the one that triggers on the press. So let me go ahead and slide these plates out. I'm hoping they don't drop them. So there's your there's your plates. So I'll go ahead and just show these. So you basically have these five little thin plates or springs rather. And and these are essentially what's used to obviously adjust the, the weight of the trigger. Now, when this came obviously pre pre fitted with five springs, I, f I found it, like I mentioned in the previous videos, it was pretty heavy on the trigger. And yeah, this this is kind of like um, obviously quite useful because obviously you can adjust those those particular springs to get a lighter pull. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna just obviously go with just two springs. So essentially, you you have your springs and you just overlay them to make sure that they obviously uh, just will sit one on top of the other. And once you have that, you can just hold on to one edge. And it's basically a case of just sliding it into the the slot that they came out of. So you can kind of do that. You can see it sliding in, and then you just need to tap it. And that center dot needs to be as central on this aperture as possible. So you can use again the Allen key just to kind of you want to make sure you just be careful when you're doing it and just literally just put them into position. And there you can see now we have those two in there. And if I just test this quickly. Just my finger press yeah i can feel a lighter press now so that obviously helps quite a lot so again so depending on obviously what your preference is on trigger weight you can adjust these uh, springs within the housing and obviously you know store these 
with the kit uh, and obviously just run the, the two springs or however many springs you want to get the, the kind of the desired uh, trigger weight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now then is obviously you're gonna fit this uh, laser bolt into the um, AR-15 here and uh, set it all up and then um, I'll show that quickly and then obviously we'll go and do some shots on some of the uh, laser ammo and virtual score simulators. And, uh, and then obviously the, at the end we'll have a quick discussion about sort of my likes, dislikes, how it performed and uh, just a general sort of overview to finish off this uh, this video. Okay. Okay, so we have the uh, the rifle now set up with the laser bolt installed and uh, the trigger connected and obviously uh, installed. I'll bring it up a, a little closer so you can see that. So, obviously this particular one, obviously uh, the spacer in there, I'll put it on the uh, fire. You can see there's, hopefully you can see there's very little take up and then there's your trigger pull. So it feels a lot lighter than it was when I did it in the previous um, part one and part two. So now with two springs, I can certainly feel that a lot lighter. I'll flip on the other side and you can see the, the kind of buffer plate there. So it sits quite nice on the uh, in the trigger well, and obviously uh, you know, it's, pretty, it's pretty secure in place and feels pretty comfortable on the trigger pull. Okay, so what we're doing then is go and uh, take some shots on the simulator and uh, then obviously we'll come back and, uh, and obviously have a, a quick overview and sort of like review of, of the actual uh, laser ammo laser bolt. Okay, so that was uh, obviously a couple of uh, shots there on different simulators and uh, hopefully that sort of gave you a kind of insight to obviously the operational use. Uh, I found it quite good. I mean, um, I had a couple of uh, shots that seemed to be miss misfires. So I could feel the trigger pull, I heard a click, but I didn't get a shot uh, register. I don't know if you saw that in some of the videos, but um, essentially apart from that, I mean, it seemed to work quite well. Uh, it's quite good with this optic on, uh, on sort of one power where obviously I could uh, obviously clearly see the, the targets on the simulator. The problem is you can't magnify, so if you move a target a uh, simulated distance further away, you can't obviously magnify that because you're just magnifying the, the, the physical um, screen that's obviously a set distance from you, so it's obviously never going to work. So um, that, that aside, whatever, you know, you have to stay at one power, so obviously if you're shooting at longer distances, whatever, one power is all you can use when you're doing on the simulators. And uh, But from a point of view of just obviously, you know, being able to at least you know, get some practice shots in, and uh, I just have some obviously sort of fun, you know, when you've got bad weather or you can't get to the range, or whatever. You know, this setup is perfect. Um, sort of, you know, I didn't really have any sort of like um, issues with this at all. I mean, the overall design and the layout um, is pretty good. You know, the instructions, whatever, it's it's all in there. And I just want to kind of, I just noticed on here that when I I mentioned in the previous video when I first got this, uh, I've I didn't realize there was a space already installed you know and they clearly put a stick on here attention one spacer already attached so it's just me not reading the instructions you know i'm, I'm typically uh, bad like that when i literally just get some new i'll just grab it out of the box and and just scan read the instructions and, and go for it so yeah one to mention there you know read instructions whatever because you know, that certainly helps uh, the removal of the spaces so these particular spaces here um are is pretty good i mean now i've got the trigger weight i feel that is comfortable for me for obviously getting multiple shots off quickly. Uh, that sort of five spacer or five spring setup was too heavy. So you'll definitely uh, need, to, I believe, to make a change on that. But as you saw in the video, pretty straightforward to do. Uh, just make sure you, you know, keep these safe and don't lose them. 
Okay, so in summary then, sort of, you know, good points, easy to install, um, pretty intuitive to uh, set up, uh, very sort of like slick to run. And, um, you know, on the simulators, whatever worked perfectly, I had one or a couple of sort of like um, misfires, which I'm not sure if that was down to my trigger pull being a bit sloppy, but, you know, that being said, I've had that with the other laser ammo products on some of my Umix pistols and stuff where the laser hasn't actuated when the when the slides rep, uh, reciprocated or the, or the hammer's fallen. So um, I've seen that before, and it's I think it's just part and parcel of the you know these these systems. But no big deal. It was only like one or two that ha occurred. Okay, so on the kind of negative points, I think um, you know there's not many really. I guess it's not really negative points. I couldn't really find anything that I didn't like. The only thing that I never want to add on a sort of negative side is is basically things I'd like to see from in a kind of improvements perspective. So even though I kind of you know understand this trigger mechanism here I like you know the fact that this was simple to install it would have been nice if obviously this laser bolt could be f actual physically triggered from the the kind of trigger the inbuilt trigger so the actual you know the trigger mechanism itself with the um, the capability of obviously the two-stage trigger with the hammer for if there's any way to actually physically trigger the laser using the, the actual inbuilt trigger rather than having to have this set up now I guess you know the smart guys at laser ammo probably use this as the simplest process and it makes sense to me i understand why it's done that way it's just i'd like to see the trigger you know actuating this laser if that's at all possible now on the flip side you know you've got to then reset the trigger so you've got to have some i mean normally in the ar obviously the, you know, the bolt would come back uh, whether it's straight pull and it's been pulled back or it's on the on the gas system that would obviously impact on the buffer tube on the buffer spring and f coming back would reset the trigger so there's a lot there's quite a bit of force there to do that i guess so you know anything you put in the bolt here has to obviously replicate that force. Now that that being said, you know I don't know if it's, if there's a way that can be done or simulate you know some sort of way of having the trigger reset. But that aside, you know that really was kind of sort of one thing that I would have liked to have seen if it's possible to sort of do that. Another thing was be um, the kind of feedback. So I know you're not going to get obviously the the kick from the rifle you would get with a two two three round, um, but similar to like the kind of gas fed or gas uh, CO2 pistols where you get the reciprocating slide, you get some kind of you know recoil feedback and it's kind of it's a small percentage of what you would have in real life but it's enough to kind of throw you off target and, and give you that sort of simulated recoil event. Now obviously with a rifle here I don't know how that could possibly be done I mean you've got space within the buffer tube so maybe something could be installed in there and obviously that interacts with the bolt and creates some sort of you know vibration effect which at least gives you some kind of mechanism of some feedback it's never going to be anywhere near enough to sort of simulate a rifle in in proper use but it's just it'd be nice to have some sort of kick or or some something to sort of like just give you that sensory feedback but really i mean that's that's the only things i can sort of think in negative sense i mean it's not really negative it's just enhancements or improvements to an existing system i think the guys you know, the guys that have nailed this in terms of sort of like the simplicity and the the actual you know ease of use and ease of setup it's just i'm always looking at sort of you know what could be changed and what could be better and and those are big things i i, I realize you know from an engineering point of view it's probably very tricky to do that so but if it can be you know something that they can do in the future that would make this bolt really a premium sort of product for the, the kind of dry fire laser target system uh, on the ar platform Okay guys, so that's pretty much sure wraps up this video. So I don't want to make this a quick one, just a review, but you know, go and check it out if you've got a if you've got an AR15 and obviously you want to you've got laser ammo um, set up or you're interested in starting dry firing, then you know I'd recommend this system definitely. I think it's it's definitely uh, worthwhile. It comes in a couple of sort of versions. You've got the infrared which I've got here, but you've also got I think a red laser version. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not much more to say really. It's it's a good setup. Uh, just you know, if you have this type of requirement or whatever, I'd certainly recommend this. I know there's a few others on the market, but yeah, my kind of point of view, I've only seen this one, so I can't really sort of comment on the other types, how good or bad they are. But for simplicity and setup of this, if you go and look at the previous videos, part one and two, you'll see the unboxing and the a kind of more detailed installation process. And uh, hopefully you can judge from yourself. But yeah, definitely, um, definitely good for my system and definitely recommended. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.